vegan health and fitness food haul. So this is the kind of stuff I eat as a plant-based nutritionist and personal trainer. We're getting into this company lately, Chia Charge. They use some really good products. So this is like a PB2, like a powdered peanut butter. I think, is it like half the calories of peanut butter? Something like that, like much less fat. 90% yeah. of the fat is taken out. It's, very, it's got that peanut butter flavor. So as like a satay sauce or something, it is phenomenal. High in protein, low calorie, and you can have it while you can and still get that lovely peanut butter goodness. These are amazing. Soya protein crispy, it's like a rice crispy made from soybeans, they're like 80% protein. You can add them to the top of like desserts on your breakfast, put them in like um, protein bars or like energy balls. Lovely way to get protein in, lovely um, texture. Just super good macros for, you know, your fitness stuff. Sometimes I'll have some granola. This one's good, it's not got like added sugar, it's not got much in the way of oils or anything, it's mostly just whole foods based. And I will just add like a bit of raisins or something, some kind of dried fruit to make it more sweet if I want that. Protein powder obviously is very useful for a strength or physique athlete. I've got the basic kind of uh, one here, which you, you, you make your normal protein shake with. It's kind of like a milky type thing. Use that in porridge and smoothies as well. I actually prefer these clear proteins though. I discovered these in the summer and they're just like a squash. This is from my protein, my vegan, clear vegan protein powder. They taste delicious and I just find it so much easier to get down. Top tip there. What have we got here? Dates, we use a lot of dates, particularly when I'm on a gaming cycle. Cause you know, like a medjool date for instance, you know, they're not that big about the same calories as an apple. So I'll switch between the two, depending on whether I'm bulking or cutting makes it so easy. Uh, these Degnet Noir, these are good in like a smoothie or something to give the sweetness, but they're not, not that enjoyable to eat on their own. They're a little dry, they're not bad, but I think like your, your Medjool date, they're kind of the Rolls Royce of dates. They're sort of ooey gooey. They go really good actually in uh, porridge in like a, your oatmeal, because they, they go really like gooey. My mouth's watering. Ground flax seeds, some people call them linseeds. Make sure they're ground, because you get 54% more of the omega-3s, which is one of the main things we're after. Full of lignans, which is a phytoestrogen, which some people fear. The men with the most phytoestrogens, particularly the lignans in their prostate fluid, are the least likely to get prostate cancer. So, and, this nonsense about phytoestrogen, they're protective, they're not harmful. This is such a good product, soya chunks. It's made from soybeans. When they extract the oil for soybean oil, you're left behind with all the fiber, all the water soluble nutrients, which is most nutrients, because most nutrients are not fat soluble. So it's lower calorie, high protein, all the goodness is in there. It's a processed food and some people will swear Blind, no, just eat whole foods or stay away from processed foods. Well, whole foods like dairy and meat drive the number one cause of death. Whereas these, they're soybeans, just with the fat taken out, they've got all the goodness, all the fiber, super, super healthy. I'll use sparkling and mineral water now and again. If I just want um, like a nice refreshing drink, I will squeeze in a bit of lemon or lime, something like that, to give it like extra nutrition. It's good between meals, so I'll also use like herbal teas. And um, between meals, our antioxidants levels dip because obviously we get those from our food. But by adding a little bit of citrus or teas between your meals, you can keep your antioxidant levels topped up, protect you from cancer. Why wouldn't you? Soya milk, I use a lot of soya milk. Very high in protein, very nutrient dense. One of the very best plant milks. I think the only one that's more nutritionally dense, probably pea protein. <laughs> Sorry, pea milk I meant to say. Brown rice breadcrumbs. We'll use these on things like breaded mushrooms, like onion rings. There's a load of kind of things. Cold cannon puffs. Yeah, like chickpea nuggets. Cro croquette potatoes. Mm. Basically, you make a batter with gram flour, aka chickpea flour, and then roll them in the breadcrumbs, air fryer or oven, so you don't have to fry them. Super healthy and a nice crunch. We all enjoy a bit of that. Garlic powder, get through a lot of that. Very uh, cancer protective. This low salt is mostly potassium salt, which is 
you know, much healthier. It's important to have our sodium relatively low. It's one of the worst things that we can put in our bodies. We need some degree of sodium, but we don't need to add, well, for most people, we don't need to be adding any. It's in the whole plant foods. A little bit is useful for some athletes, particularly if they're in a hot climate, but we don't need to be mainlining it like we are. And as well as total sodium being important, the potassium sodium balance is important. So by using something such as that, you can get that in a more favorable place. Gherkins, just, you know, pickled gherkins, little pickles, can just fun up some of your food, you know, keep it interesting. Uh, occasionally use baked beans. Um, these Heinz ones, no added sugar. Obviously they're a bit healthier for you. Reed fried beans are handy as a pantry staple. They're good in fajitas and like any kind of tacos, burritos, that type of thing. Usually, you know, we make most of our foods from scratch, but occasionally you want something ready to go. And this kind of sauce, tomato sauce from like a supermarket, that their own brand um, usually, is really oil free or low in oil, full of good stuff and actually, when you, pro when you process tomatoes, you get far more of the lycopene, the like really powerful, the red like antioxidant color. Um, you know, this is a carotenoid that helps us to make vitamin A as vegan, so good ones to get in there. Legumes, we use tons of different legumes. I probably eat a couple of cans of different legumes every day. Lentils are good, they're lower in fiber for people who are struggling to get all that fiber in. Black beans I love chickpeas I love, um, they're all good. Any any legume, they're like the cornerstone, along with whole grains of the Blue Zones diets. You know, the people in the world where the, the most centenarians uh, live in that community. So real cornerstone, a lot of the nutrients you get from meat, like your protein, zinc, like a lot of the minerals. Very, very good for a vegan, very good for anyone. Alpro plain soy yogurt. So this is a uh, soya base. You'll see I'm eating a lot of soya foods. It's a bean, they're really healthy. I've not got BB swell, not, not ones that I don't want, ones that I can bounce. I'm not doing too bad, am I? It doesn't look like my testosterone's too low, does it? Doesn't look like I'm feminized. Um, I think we're doing all right. Don't worry about soya. White rice. I eat a lot of white rice nowadays used to stick to the whole grain, like the brown or black or whatever. White rice obviously is lower in fibre. It's not as nutrient dense, but it's not harmful like we used to think. Really, white rice is a kind of proxy for a poorer diet in some of the poorer countries. And the fact that they had more disease was because their total dietary and profile was poor and not the rice in and of itself. We've teased that out with, with newer studies looking at more um, confounding variables. So we know that it's not harmful for me. You know, as a larger strength athlete, trying to get all the calories in, I do need to drop my fiber down a little touch. Uh, if I'm dieting, or if I'm advising any of our clients, particularly if they're doing a fat loss um, phase, you know, they'd be eating the whole grain much better. Tofu, I eat so much tofu, real staple for a vegan strength or physique athlete. This is the firm stuff. We've also got silken, so we can make kind of sauces, mousses, other desserts nutritional yeast. This is crack for vegans. Uh, if you don't know it, it's basically single cell mushrooms. It's like a uh, little flakes. Nutty, very cheesy flavor. 50% protein by weight. Tons of B vitamins, tons of zinc. Really health promoting um, and delicious. Wax your protein right up. Don't overdo it because you would create uric acid uh, from, from it breaking down in the body. So you don't want to go mad. I, I probably <laughs> used to always do a double week at some point. Probably I'll do a couple of tablespoons a day now and, and no more than that. But you know, the dose makes the poison. This is a really health promoting food. Athletes were um, studied and the ones, endurance athletes uh, having this had 50% of the upper respiratory tract infections post, um, post competition, say they're doing like a, I don't know, triathlon or something crazy. Uh, if they included that beta-glucan state, you know, very healthy. Otobix, mostly I just eat oats, but you know, it's just nice to mix shit up. Rice noodles, same nutrition as rice, but just keeps it bloody interesting. Walnuts, possibly, according to the science, the healthiest nut. However, that science was paid for by the um, California Walnut Institute, so, you know, you might want to take that with a grain of salt. But the most omega-3 of any nut, I think the highest antioxidants that we've measured, very nutritionally dense. 
I'll use those as a staple. I'll also eat a lot of, I'll have like a Brazil nut a day for the selenium. Oftentimes I'll use sunflower seeds for like the vitamin E. And we mentioned flax was important for omega-3. Also do a lot of chia seeds. I don't think we want a huge percentage of our diet as dietary fats, which nuts and seeds are very high in fats. But we do want some amount of omega-3, of omega-6. So those are the ones that I use very, very regularly. And just sometimes I'll switch a bit of them out. I'll keep the fats and chia because we need the omega-3. I'll keep the Brazil nut because we need the selenium. But sometimes I'll use pecans or, you know, just the range of different nuts and seeds. The more different types of whole plant foods we eat, the more different types of fiber we consume. And that gives the best potential for their greatest lifespan and health span because we're feeding the good bacteria and the gut microbiome is the linchpin of your health. There's many different fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, herbs, spices, legumes, whole grains, as you can, people. Fruits, who doesn't like a mango? Are you aware of tamarind? Sweet tamarind, they're a dried fruit. You kind of crack the shell, pull them out. They've got kind of stringy bits on there. So you, you know, it's a lot of work for little reward because there's not much, but they're blinking delicious. They're so tasty. If you've had the brown chutney at like a, an Indian restaurant, that is tamarind and, and date sauce. Okay, it's a very good ingredient. It's really delicious. It's just a lot of blinking work. So I'll, I'll eat those really. <laughs> what have we got, more blinking dates? Fresh dates. Oh. I really like these ones. Oh, fresh are they? I, I might have already had some. <laughs> I got them yesterday, but I had oh. to eat some. Oh, that sounds nice. We'll be checking those out later on. <laughs> Water chestnuts, lovely in a, in a stir fry. You know, don't eat them that often. But nice tea. We get through a lot of lemons and limes for various cooking and drinks and things. Avocado, a lot of vitamin E in avocados. The fats, there's a lot of minor unsaturated, which, which is not an essential fat. So I tend to stick to the more polyunsaturated rich nuts, seeds, whole nut and seed butters. But still really, really good. Passata, again, a processed tomato food, so very high in lycopene. Great for pizza bases, you know, the sauce. What else will you use that for, Gemma? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Pizzas is what I think <laughs> of right now. <laughs> okay then. Radishes, you know, any any fruit or vegetable is gonna be super healthy, isn't it? For some reason, we've got two lots of uh, bananas there. <laughs> I don't know what that's all about. Raisins, I eat a lot of raisins on a bulking cycle. Not so many dry fruits on the cut. Oh, we got these to try. Whitworth Fusions, not tried them yet. Strawberry flavor mango, watermelon flavor, papaya. I think they've got like juice like squeezed on them or whatever. There are sulfites in there. You shouldn't really be eating sulfites. So we'll, you know, we'll give those a try. But you know, the rest of the week I'll be eating dried fruit with, with, that hasn't been monkeyed about like that, you know? Speaking of dried fruits, jackfruit. Are you guys familiar? Here's a jackfruit now. They're really spiny. They're really sticky. People cut them open. They do have to add like oil to the knives, don't they? Yeah. It's like latex, is it? That comes <laughs> out. Delicious. It tastes like pineapple bubble gum. I shit you not. <laughs> really, really delicious. So expensive though. My so expensive fruit. to get the fresh, so. Uh, you know, we will get a little chunk of it occasionally. They sell it by the chunk because it's so expensive. But the dried one is, is still pretty nice. Not as good as the fresh though, eh? Yeah. Oh, a lot of people make pulled jackfruit with the canned, pulled mm. pork with the canned mm. jackfruit. I don't know if that's really my sort of thing. Melons, one of the best fruits for dieting, very low calorie, like strawberries. More bananas, what the hell are these ones? I think they're those little apple bananas. Oh, so apple bananas. I went bananas. to an Asian supermarket yeah. yesterday and I got those, those and those. Yeah. Yeah, they are a kind of mix, aren't they, of apple yeah. and, yeah, yeah, and banana. Um, naked bars, you know, again, just mix things up occasionally. They are expensive, but you, you know, you don't just want to be in the same Bournemouth dried fruit, mostly for dessert. I'll have um, raisins with a bit of almond butter and, and um, cinnamon or have dates with a bit of maybe um, peanut butter. If I'm having that nearly every meal, it's just nice occasionally to have like, you know, something like that. Mix it up. Quinoa, one of the highest protein grains, actually a pseudo grain, but you'll eat it like a grain, so don't worry about it. Meat um, replacements. These Linda McCartney rice meat red onion, super delicious. 
Um, they're actually very low fat, very high protein. Of course, they're a bit soggy like all processed foods. So I don't eat a whole lot, but it's just nice to have something like that on occasion. And as a strength, uh, or more physique athlete, I am like, I kind of need a higher percentage of protein that you would not just get from a whole foods plant-based diet. You can do whole foods plant-based, you know, and be an athlete, but you won't have the optimum amount of protein. You know, you could do better. You're leaving gains on the table, basically, if you don't use a bit more of a processed protein food as well. Just a couple of servings a day, probably all you need. You don't need to mainline it like a lot of um, people do, like I used to do. But yeah, don't neglect it if you want to actually do your best. And I don't see it as particularly harmful. If you're eating, you know, 95% whole plant foods, so bloody protective. Yeah, you're displacing food, you know, that's higher in fibre, higher in nutrients, but you're doing all right compared to the masses who are eating any old bullshit and dead animals and animal secretions that drive the number one cause of death. So I wouldn't worry too much. Fries in fruit and veg is really useful. Freezing locks in the nutrients, actually. There's a smoothie mix for if you're feeling particularly lazy. Berries, we eat a lot of blueberries. Gemma particularly goes with the blueberries. I do a mix of berries. Um, cheap and healthy and very delicious. Oat cakes. Most of them have palm oil, which is horrible for heart health and displaces orangutans, which as vegans, we don't like that. Uh, these ones from Asda, their own brand, they don't, and they're just very good. Again, there's a little salt in there like any processed food, so don't overdo them, but just nice on occasion to have an oat cake rather than having to have just plain oats all the blink in time. Again, we usually cook from scratch, but say you're in a rush, you just got in, you need to eat, Something like this is pretty decent. Not much in the way of additives, loads of whole plant foods. Microwaves are not gonna kill you. Anyone who says otherwise is a complete bad end. Spot in old bro science from the 70s. Uh, grains as well, you know, they can be handy in a pinch. Uh, what have we got here? Lentils and kidney beans. Cajun style, just sounds nice. Just saw it and thought we not tried that one yeah, yet, so that's just good. mix things up. But again, mostly stick to the, the fresh whole plant foods, like make, make your own food. Peppers are great, obviously. Um, herbs and spices, probably the most nutritionally dense foods in the world, lots of antioxidants, few calories. Gorgettes, tomatoes, you know what these things are. Which um, grapes are these, Victoria? Oh, sable, I love sable grapes. These can be really sweet as well, though, just like a more standard one. Beetroot, as you know, boosts your nitric oxide to make you more vascular, more um, stamina for working out. Very, very good. You know what carrots are. You know what cabbages are. No, that's a cabbage. <laughs> Apparently I don't know, and I'm a vegan, vegan nutritionist. <laughs> that's a cauliflower. These are cruciferous vegetables. If you were to cut through the stalk, or if you looked at the flowers, you'd see they were a cross shape. So cruci cruciferous from the word crucifix. And um, they have that peppery flavor, which is sulforaphane, which protects from certain types of cancer. It boosts your liver uh, detox enzymes. So cruciferous vegetables, I'll get at least one serving a day. Very, very health promoting. Um, cress, cress is good. You know what cress is. That is um, what we'd call like a garden cress. Water cress is better. Garden cress grows in soil. Water cress grows in water. This is not baby uh, water cress. Like some people sometimes think. Again, we do use chopped, uh, sliced, frozen veggies. Usually we'll cook from scratch. Uh, and make everything themselves, but this has the nutrients locked in. Just sometimes you're in a rush and you can just stick them, or you run out of fresh, and you think, bloody hell, I've got no vegetables. Yes, you have, you've got a freezer full of them. Don't worry about it. Potatoes, we eat a shit ton of potatoes. We like to chip them and stick them like in the air fryer or oven with no oil. Mashed potatoes, steamed potato, roast potatoes, again, we don't add oil to ours. When you're dieting, very filling, very good diet fuel. And potatoes have a thing called pro potato protease inhibitor 2, which signals the, the satiety um, signal. Signals the satiety signal? I feel like I could have said that better. You know, high water, high fiber, very filling. Um, lettuce, the, the iceberg lettuce is kind of a watery bag of pesticides really, it's not got much nutrition. But if you can get some kind of greener leaves, the greener the better, but little gems, romaine, still good. 
still good. I prefer the darker leaves, ideally. Who doesn't like asparagus? Put that on the grill uh, normally to cook, it's much nicer. Mushroom, you know what mushrooms are. Here's another cruciferous vegetable, and here's another cruciferous vegetable. Kale, Cavolo Nero uh, brand, to be precise. Do you feel like you could benefit from someone helping you to craft the optimal plan with all these types of food for your needs? Consider checking out our online coaching service and our meal plan service. We do, we do both of those. We've got other services on our website, henshobervore.com. Check that out. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.